and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. Thanks for joining us. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. The World Health Organization reports that globally, more than 300 million people of all ages suffer from depression. It's the leading cause of disability worldwide. According to estimates, the number of people living with depression increased by more than 18% in the 10 years between 2005 and 2015. More women than men are affected by this ailment, which some experts call a mood disorder. In the house is a consultant psychiatrist, Dr. Memuna Kadiri. Dr. Kadiri is the medical director at Pinnacle Medical Services in Lagos. You're welcome to the show. Thank you. Good morning, Nigerians, or good day, Nigerians. Yeah. I don't mean to sound skeptical, but a mood disorder. Mm -hmm. People would say, what's that? Exactly. Cheer the person up, put some music, dance, dance. and throw yeah, off the mood. Yeah. So what's this mood disorder about? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a, among the mental health um, conditions. Uh, they have different categories. So depression is under the category of mood disorder. And it's a serious mental illness. We need to understand it because a lot of times people use the word carelessly, I'm depressed. Yes. Um, so it's, it's, it is a serious mental So a lot disorder. of times when people say I'm depressed, they're not really yeah, depressed. Yeah, you may not really be depressed. It's just an expression, expression of sadness. And maybe, it's sad, maybe sadness for a day or two or thereabout. Because depression, when it comes with sadness, it must be persistent for at least two weeks. That's so it's, it's two weeks of sadness, sadness yeah. end on end, without breaking. Maybe, yeah, well, maybe breaking, maybe fleeting, maybe mood swing, but it has to be persistent. And it's at least minimum of two weeks. So five days, one week of sadness may not necessarily. In fact, you shouldn't even use the word depression unless you've been assessed that you have clinical depression. Okay. Yes. Okay. So what causes it? There's so many causes. Some, that's why we say depression is not a sin. People don't, sh shouldn't think that they brought it upon themselves or it's a spiritual attack. Because we have some people that are genetically predisposed, meaning it's in the family. So you possibility or probability you may have depression is there. So if you ha now have it later in life, does it mean that you've, you've sinned or the girls are angry with you or they're about? Aside from that, we have um, people that have been sexually abused. So when we talk about the sexual abuse, people need to take it very seriously. Because some people, because of that childhood uh, issue, they may you not know, be, may have depression later in life. We cannot take the environmental factors away from from that, um, um, unemployment, um, job dissatisfaction, traumatic life experiences like being death. kidnapped from being school, kidnapped, exactly, internally displaced. You are within your country. You are in Nigeria, but you are not internally displaced. You know those things like that. We have people that have, you know traumatic life experience apart from all these ones we've mentioned, like death of a loved one, loved one. So that that can be, you know, so and it increases. The risk of um, um, even getting depressed increases with uh, issues like poverty, financial difficulties, relationship breaks up, breakups, and all that. So we need to put all this in, in, in proper perspective and know there are people more at risk than others. Okay, now I'm seeing, you know, this picture, unimportant, unwanted, broken. Exactly. What, what's this about? No. Are these symptoms? Yeah, they, they, that's how they feel. They, are, they feel that way. And that's why a lot of times people use the word, I'm fine, it is well. If you literally look at it, you can break that fine into some of the symptoms of depression or fatigue, insecure or inability to sleep. Um, the end can be not eating well and the end can be experiencing poor sleep. So when you say, I'm fine, but if you look deeply, the person may, might have expressed, you know, have that facial expression of sadness. So those are the things they are experiencing. But how do people now know that this person is depressed? It may be the behavioral manifestation. Maybe the person crying more than before, the person looking sad or morose, the person withdrawing, not wanting to do things or not really gives you more her pleasure. Maybe it's today, Saturday, oh, one bad kind of person. And all of a sudden, the person doesn't even want to leave his or her own house. So those are the things that people can see as behavioral manifestation that can make them worry or they are concerned about the health of their loved ones. Sometimes pregnant women cry. Could, could that be depression? Because Not they say really. that they have mood swings. Not really. 
crying is an, is, an, is, is an expression of emotion. Not really. Crying, no. But weeping spells, crying more than necessary, crying for mundane things, crying when actually you, it's not something you should tear about. But it's more than that is a problem. Because if you cry, you know, or cry easily or just cry for any little thing. And you know, this person wasn't like that before. Definitely, it should be a concern. That okay, so that's the that key. It's the a key. change. It's a change. Yes, it's a behavioral change. So we need to understand that some people generally, they are emotional, some people. And it doesn't that this person, any little thing, throws her off balance, especially for the women, because depression is twice more in women than in men. They hold twice more. <laughs> Why? <laughs> women, we are women, emotions, hormones, and all that. We, we, there's this societal value placed on women that we are, we are multitaxers. So people, expect so much more from us and some women can't really okay, cope but so they just want to it's a keep pressure on the them. pressure yeah and then we are we do a lot of things actually you are a daughter you're a sister you're a mother you're a wife you're a colleague you're a friend you know there's so much you know a lot on 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 the women than you know, the expectation but the truth is that if I, as a psychiatrist i see 10 people waiting for me and nine are women and one a man that has depression, I'm going to be a bit more concerned about the men because men don't really come out to say they are depressed. Okay, isn't that an issue? Is, yeah. it, is it not possible that the reason why it's like twice more yeah. than men is that the men don't like to talk about it? The men don't like to talk about it. So it's underrated in men because they, they'll tell you, man up, what's wrong with you? Yeah, man, man up. up. No, they no. even use it's, it in the yeah, sentence. It's, it's the man up, uh, you can't be depressed, it's for weak people. No, depression is not for people with weak character, no. So we need to know that men also get depressed. So by the time a man is presenting with depression, a lot of times it's on the severe form, severe end. Maybe he has even attempted suicide before or thereabout, or there's a, a major change, something very drastic that people around are.